This was my first step in toward the compost heater experiment. And I started with a small uh, four gallons inside a five gallon container built similar to a rocket stove with a hollow center chimney style design, mostly shredded paper and a little bit of cardboard shredded. So very high carbon content. I added a doctor's earth natural compost starter. Um, and I also added some plant food in the form of water soluble orchid plus 2014, 13. So it gave it a little bit of some of those others kind of like trace ish, but still very heavy carbon <clears throat> side. Um, the whole thing was around 3.9 kilograms dry weight, uh, container and everything all together. Um, and then I um, added the water in, and that was February 1st, 2020, and I let it compost in my basement, which in February was maybe 60-ish degrees, and then in the hot, hotter summer months it got up maybe close to 70, but around that 60, 70-ish degree temperatures. I did, um, I didn't notice any perceivable amounts of heat. Um, that I was able to pinpoint. So any heat it was generating was either offset by water evaporation or the uh, just thermal flux going out into the room because um, it wasn't insulated at all. But I can say from the beginning to the end, it does look to me as though it composting was proceeding and happening, even if fairly slow and not really perceivable amounts of heat and so forth. Um, at, I ended after six months because that's roughly what the compost heater going to be running for. And I also ended because um, in, in, the, in nine, the container cracked which was interesting. Um, so normally with just water, those containers last for a long, long time. Uh, so something in the composting process was actually brittling this plastic. So part two of the compost heater experiment was a larger scale. They weren't one, then two in sequence, instead it was concurrent. Um, so this is me building up the larger, the next steps in, in scale. And we started with this 16 gauge galvanized um, wire and put into a small little diameter circle, about 20 inches in diameter. Um, there's a little base for it to sit on, which some supports, so that there'll be some airflow underneath. I'm going to use aluminum screen um, and some uh, landscaping cloth to let air and water in, but keep the compost. And we're going to attach and sew all that together with some enamel coated copper wire. There's one of them finished. And then I also made these chimneys. Um, it's open at the bottom, um, so about two feet or so has that percolation, but this still has room for that sensor to fit in. The sensors are temperature and humidity of that exhaust air coming out of a reaction vessel. And the ambient uh, system that I'm using allows for eight sensors in total. So one outside, one inside, and six reaction vessels. Um, the way that the system is going to be set up is so that the air will come into the 55 gallon drum. It'll go around the outside, but air and water permeable so it can react and then come through under the bottom up through that center shaft. And that way, no part of the compost reaction is more than eight inches from air and water supply. I'm going to fill then a container up to the top of that inner container, close up the top. And from there, I tried and experimented with uh, HVAC style, but then ended up switching over to a PVC style system, which worked better for sealing and water and so forth keeping it airtight. Here we can see an A and a B in the bottom right hand corner. A is the air inlet, B is the water inlet to a soaker hose coil. For the air inlet, I didn't use much. It's just this simple little one and a half watt uh, radio sh old Radio Shack fan. It doesn't need a lot. It's not moving fast. It's not like a fireplace. Here above, uh, over, I have an exhaust on the top there near, near the light. And that's where the exhaust of this is going to go outside through the chimney. It used to be an old uh, natural gas um, exhaust. And that's a picture of it being finished to run. Um, it's important because if the reaction goes um, anaerobic, um, lacking enough oxygen, it could potentially produce methane. So I have a methane detector um, and carbon monoxide detector gases and so forth. So that will alert me if that happens. Even if it did, it should be vented out. But if it doesn't, then there's some in that space. Separate from that, it's also generally a, a good idea to have uh, the exhaust products or the gases from a composting reaction. Um, if it's a small amount, then you're OK with a little bucket or something in the house. But um, six 40-gallon reaction vessels like this, that much. You have mold, fungus, milk, like all that stuff that your composting mechanisms in there is not stuff that you want in your house per se, um, at least not in those quantities. So it's important to ventilate those out. Um, in the six reaction vessels that I have, um, I have one that is all shredded leaves just from the, uh, I have a leaf blower slash vac and when it sucks it up, it shreds it. A uh, one that's all shredded paper goods like junk mail and stuff like that. One is uh, MDF and particle board sawdust from where I work. One is a 50-50 mix of shredded paper and MDF saw particle board sawdust. One is a uh, three-way split, so thirds. One third paper, one third regular straight wood dust, and mostly like poplar or stuff like that, not very heavy. Um, and uh, one third wood chip, which was mostly like oaks and stuff like that. And then one bag of the Dr. Earth um, starter and one bag of the water-soluble orchid fertilizer. 
And the last reaction test vessel is all wood pellets um, plus one bag of the water soluble orchid fertilizer and one of the compost starter. Um, it all runs in my basement, which is say 60 to 70 degrees, different, give or take the time of year, for about uh, 11 months or so. Um, and then at the end of that, we're going to pull it out. And we're going to get the data collected and see how well it goes. This is about 10 times bigger than that first step in the uh, four gallons. Um, so each one of these different mixes is about 10 times that. Um, I'm not expecting this to be a massive amount of heat, but this is the next step in that experimenting process.